Excellent. Well, just for those that don't know me, I'm Megan Hutchison, Council's Economic Development Manager. And um, Council and the Chamber, um, again, happy to, to bring to you uh, these webinars or these online meetings, which I hope you're finding of value. Uh, today's is becoming an expert in your own industry. Um, I'm really looking forward to learning uh, how to do this because um, I think we're all a bit guilty of not um, um, well, walking the talk or uh, as you mentioned before, Glenn, um, it's important to, to be able to put yourself out there and uh, start that discussion. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Glenn. Um, just for those two, we're holding these every Wednesday and on a Monday from 12 o'clock, we also hold some updates um, on COVID with regard to um, financial stimulus packages and what needs to be done to tap into any grant funding um, programs that are around. So if you need any more information, please let me know and uh, we can hook you up with those. So over to you, Glenn. Thanks, Megan. Uh, big thanks to Megan and Kaima Council for allowing us to do this event and the Kaima Business Chamber as well. So uh, today we're talking about how to become an expert in your industry. Um, this is an exciting topic. This is a topic where you know I'm very passionate about, and uh, and it's it's an opportunity for you and your business in order to establish yourself as an expert, be a thought leader in your industry. And I'm going to tell you why that's important. And Wade's here with me as well, Wade Stewart, as part of the Resolve coaching team, and he's going to be around for some Q and A afterwards, but also to bring in his input too towards the end of the webinar. And he's really great to hear from on this topic as well. So without further ado, let's rip in. How to become an expert in your industry. You guys probably know who I am by now. Uh, Hayworth Guitars is, is uh, my retail business that I run. We have a couple of different music schools. We have um, multiple music stores and an online component. We've made the transition to online and a big chunk of our business is now online. And now I'm doing result business coaching here in Kiama. So today we're going to be talking about why being an expert is important for you, for you and your business and often what holds us back from establishing that expert status and, 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 and really putting ourselves out there as the experts in our industry. So we're going to talk about that to start with. And then we're going to start to ask a few questions on where you are an expert in your industry. And we're going to talk about your elevator pitch. So, con so communicating your message clearly in a, in a concise way when we're asked, you know, what do you do? What, what is it that you offer? Talking about your elevator pitch. We're going to talk about becoming a thought leader in your industry and making expert level videos, how video content can play a big part in that. We're going to talk about releasing a book. We're going to talk about starting a blog and we're going to talk about how you can get featured in media publications as well. All right, so why is being an expert important? Customers want to deal with the experts. I mean, I know from personal experience, if I... If I look for something new that I want to get, if I look for a new business I want to, uh, I'm going to deal with, if I'm looking for a business coach, I want to deal with an expert. I want to deal with someone who really knows what they're talking about. And that's the same with your customers. They want to deal with someone who knows what they're talking about, who's an expert in their industry. Uh, specialists versus generalists. I mean, if you have something happen to you and it's a general thing and you go and see a general practitioner, uh, compared to if you need to go and see a specialist, Specialists are the ones on the big bucks, right? They're the ones because they're the experts. They put in that time. They're an expert. They know about their niche and therefore they charge more. So experts often do get paid more. So that's why it's important to establish ourselves as an expert in our industry. People seek advice from who they trust and, and, and we often trust experts. We trust their advice and their guidance. And it often leads to free advertising. Experts often do get talked about, word of mouth, articles in, in newspapers, magazines, blogs, and that sort of thing. And it can open doors for you to premium customers and to business partners. Look, it's not just for your customers, it's you know, your business partners, suppliers, they want to deal with experts, they want to deal with uh, those who are at the cutting edge of your industry. So that's why it's important to be an expert, and we're going to talk about how to do that. First of all, let's talk about what holds us back. This is something that I'm, I've experienced with a lot of our clients. Uh, in, in talking about releasing content and things like that and helping to establish themselves as the expert. A lot of the things that, that can hold us back is imposter syndrome. What is imposter syndrome? Well, it's thinking that 
I'm not qualified for this, I'm undertrained, I'm not ready, and I don't know enough, right? But the thing uh, about imposter syndrome is all it takes is putting yourself out there and realizing that there's certain things that you know and you don't have to go out there and try and teach everyone in your industry. You just have to teach those people who, who, are, who are just that little, that one, two, three, four, five, ten 10 steps behind you, you can pass on your lessons to them. So often we, we think, you know, I might not be an expert because there's all these people who are so much further ahead than me, right? In the coaching space, I look at guys like Tony Robbins and Gary V, right? In this coaching space who are really at that next, next level, that, that super high level. But they know so much and they're right at the end of the curve. But if we step back a bit, there's all these people back here who I can help, right? Because I have the experience and training to be able to help them. So often we compare ourselves to those top, top, top level experts and we don't have to be at that level to be an expert, right? We can, we can, we can realize that there's people we can help who, who we don't have to go out there and try and help everyone like these uh, Tony Robbins and Gary Vee's of the world, right? So realizing that you're probably a lot further along than you think. And really, it's all about staying in your lane and focusing on what you know well, sticking to what you know, sticking to your strengths, lean into your niche. This is, this is how we can focus on becoming an expert and this is how we can get over that imposter syndrome it's focusing on your niche you know um some of the greatest advice i've had is to focus on you know those the the strengths that i have in my own business applying those strengths to help other business owners and it's the same in 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 your industry it's focusing on what you know well what is your strength what is your niche um, and focus on that. And I'll put, uh, put also there too, that, that practice builds confidence. Just putting ourselves out there, putting the message out there, building up that practice. I mean, it's the same thing with public speaking. Right? A lot of people say, you know, I, I'm terrible at public speaking. Well, I often ask them, how many times have you done it before, right? Only a handful of times. But if you put yourself out there consistently, every day, every week, whatever it is, but consistently put yourself out there and put your message out there, then that's going to build confidence. It's all practice, right? So. Learning to overcome imposter syndrome is important, is an important first step. So let's talk about you. What are you an expert in? I know we've got a, a lot of different business owners who have joined this webinar today. And I want to ask the question, I want you to start to think about what are you an expert in? What is your strengths? What is your niche? What are you an expert in? Uh, so start to think about these questions as we go through the webinar. What are your key strengths in your business? What are you, what, why do your customers like dealing with you? Right? What is it about you that I like dealing with? What, is, what are your strengths? It might be you have you know, that outstanding customer service. It might be that you know uh, about a certain product or a certain brand. I mean, I'll use the example with our guitar store, right? We were, we were once you know, a, a music store, a mum and dad music store, guitars, drums, keys, amplifiers. But if you look at all of our content now on social media and the majority of our website listings, most of, that, most of those products are guitars. We found out that, that we're the experts in guitars. My dad's built guitars uh, ever since he was a high school teacher. He's built guitars, he's re repair guitars. I've built guitars, I've, I repair guitars. Our whole team now know how to set up guitars. We are the guitar experts. And so that is our area that we're an expert in. So start to think about what area of your business you are an expert in. What do you do better than anyone else? than any of your competitors? And what's your story? What's your background? What's your, what's your history? What area can you lean into in your business that makes you an expert? So I want you guys to start to think about these questions as we go through today's web webinar. Righto, let's talk about elevator pitches. Now, an elevator pitch. What is an elevator pitch? An elevator pitch is, is when someone asks you, hey, what do you do? An elevator pitch is a quick you know, couple of sentences that describes what you do it describes the problem that you solve and it, and it helps to, with that elevator pitch, provide examples of people that you've helped solve their problems. So an elevator pitch gives you a clear message of who you are and what you do, helps to establish yourself as an expert, helps to give a clear message on what problem you solve and helps to provide examples of your solution in action. This is why it's important. So it's basically a clear and concise message you give when you're asked a question, so what do you do? Right? You want to be able to clearly and concisely say what you do, what's the, what's, the, what's the core problem in your industry and how do you solve that problem 
and give some examples of how you do that. This is what all the experts know. All the experts who we look up to know what the problem is that they solve, how they solve it, and they have a whole bunch of testimonials and customer examples they can draw on as uh, examples of who they've helped solve that problem. So this is really uh, a, a key part in establishing ourselves as the experts. So three things. What problem do you solve in your industry? What is the core problem that you solve? What is the, the main issues your customers are coming to you with? What is your solution that you provide? And then giving some examples of your solution in action. So talking about the problem. So talking about, well, look, you know how there's this problem in our industry at the moment. You know how people are finding it hard to do this or that, or there's these pain points people are coming to us with. Well, here's actually how we solve that problem for them. And in fact, here's some people that we've helped to solve that problem. So that's really in a nutshell, an elevator pitch. And so this is, this is key to really work out what you're an expert in, what is the problem, core problem that you solve, and what is your solution to that problem, and then marrying that up with some examples of your solution in action as well to define the perfect elevator pitch. This is something we've worked with with some of our clients here in the coaching space to clearly define what they do. So, uh, so it might go something along the lines of this. Well, you know how there's this problem. Well, here's what we do to fix it. And in fact, here are some clients we've worked with who are already seeing some amazing results. So start to think about what is that core problem that you solve in your industry and how do you solve that problem? This is how we form our elevator pitch. I've got some examples there. You know, in the retail coaching space, well, you know how there's a lot of retailers who have been struggling due to the online landscape? Well, we help get retailers online by helping them with their website, social media, and lead generation. In fact, here's some businesses we've worked with who are already kicking goals as a result. So that's really our elevator pitch with the retail coaching side of things. So think about what's the problem you solve, how do you solve that problem, and what are some examples of people that you've helped. Let's talk about becoming a thought leader in your industry. Uh, how do we establish ourselves as an expert? Another great thing we can do is establishing ourselves as a thought leader in our industry. And what are things that thought leaders do? Well, they often will provide a market update of their industry. So they'll provide a report. Um, I, I follow these guys, The Property Couch. I don't know if anyone here is into property or property investing, but they have one of the top podcasts out there on property investing. Uh, ben Kingsley and Bryce Holdaway are their names. A couple of Aussie guys. They have a really engaging podcast. And on their website, they provide a free report. Right, you can sign up to their free report. This is also another great way where they build their customer database to get you to enter your name and your email. So they build up a customer database, they nurture over time and potentially you know, convert them into customers. But these guys are buyer's agents, right? They do, obviously they're doing their podcasts for free. They're doing these reports for free. But really it's to establish them themselves as an expert. They have a book as well, which I'm gonna talk about later. Um, but they do all these things. They provide all these resources because they're establishing themselves as the expert so when someone wants to get into property investing if they're looking for a buyer's agent to use who do you think they're going to go to right they're going to go to the guys they've listened to their podcast they've read their book you know they may have got their free report they're establishing themselves as the experts in their industry and as the thought leaders so they provide a market update anyone who we look up to as experts will often provide free reports or market updates um, speaking at industry events is another thing or starting a podcast. And this is something that I want to use as an example of the Property Couch because I think they do all these things really well. They have a podcast, they offer free reports, uh, they're often speaking at different industry events. You can listen to them on their podcast as well. And this is how they're establishing themselves as a thought leader in their industry and establishing themselves as an expert. Um, I want to talk about video content now. So as we move into video content, I mean, myself and Wade, we've talked about this at length before, how great video is for your social media, um, in building an audience from that, in, the, in engagement, there's nothing that engages quite like video at the moment. So um, I wanna talk about video and how you can create some videos to help establish yourself as the expert in your industry. So releasing short informative videos on hot topics. Uh, Megan and I were just talking about this at the start of the webinar, actually it's some videos that I'm actually putting out myself. Three tips, three tips to starting your own business, that's an Instagram, a TV video that I put out recently. Um, but basically it's talking about the topic or the problem. Talk about why it's important to your audience, why it's important to focus on this topic, why it's important to solve this problem and offer, offering your advice, offering your solutions to solving that problem. 
um, and provide some examples. I mean, I've just been talking to Jess recently from South Coast Hair and Makeup, who is now doing some videos, some live videos and some videos on her Instagram and Facebook on how to do certain makeup styles at home, how to do it yourself. She's helping to establish herself as an expert in her industry. So putting out those videos, putting out that video content with tips and tricks, you've heard me talk about it before, but I mean, you might, you might think, gee, Glenn, you talked about this on, on the webinar last week or the week before. Well, I'm repeating myself sometimes because that's what works. I mean, that's what Gary Vee says as well. He talks about the same stuff over and over again, but that's because this is what works. So I'm gonna keep talking about what works. How do we establish ourselves as an expert? Putting out these, these uh, videos with tips and tricks, offering your solutions and advice for different problems in your industry. Providing examples of how that solution has worked before. And this can work for live videos or it can work for featured videos. So great place to put them. Uh, you know, post them on your social media, Instagram, Facebook, send them as, a, as an email to your audience, have them on your website. Um, something that Wade and I have done recently is put these webinars on our Resolve Coaching website as a resource people can go to. And that's just an example of how we're working to establish ourselves as the experts in our industry by having those featured videos there available for people to watch. Now I wanna talk about a press release, how this can be a powerful way to uh, be publicized uh, with media, whether it be local media or, or, or the wider media, but writing your own press release. I mean, so many times we read, we, we read articles in newspapers and, and magazines and that sort of thing, and we think, wow, this is a really nice article. This is really talking them up, and, and it helps us to hold that person they're writing about or that business as the experts, right? But a lot of the time, these people are writing the articles themselves, right? And sending them off to the, to, the, uh, to the journalists to print them. And this is something that I'm guilty of too, right? A lot of the times with my businesses, I'll write a press release, I'll get some photos, and I'll get them sent off to the journalists that I know. And a lot of the time, the journalists will only need to make slight modifications, maybe fix up my bad spelling or grammar or whatever it is. But then they'll post the article, and I've just talked talked about myself and, and some uh, achievements or things that we've done in the business and provided them with that content and then they'll, they'll publish that. And the reason that is so good is because it provides free publicity. Um, I wanna show you guys this. This is a bit of a funny one. I'm gonna <laughs> lead into why this is a funny uh, shot here. The front page of the Mercury, uh, we did a, a ukulele world record years ago and we played, I played ukulele for 25 hours straight. I thought this is a great opportunity to do a press release. Illawarra Mercury puts it on the front page. It's a great way to get free publicity. But look, I don't know how much it costs to get on the front page of the newspaper, but I know it's really, really expensive. We obviously didn't have to pay for this because it was a press release that we sent out about what we were doing. Um, so we got featured on the front page. It's, it establishes brand awareness. It helps to establish us as the experts. And it often, often helps to provide some third party compliments when, you know, it's, it's hard to, if you, if you come out there and you're talking yourself up and we've done this and we've done that, right? We're, we're, you know, we don't always want to do that, but if we have a third party talking about our achievements and things that we're doing and helping to establish that expert status, it adds a lot more credibility because someone else is actually talking about the wins and achievements uh, that we've had rather than us talking about ourselves. I'm gonna come back to this article in a second and talk about why there's a funny little thing, uh, a good lesson here in this article, but this is why press releases are so powerful. Uh, we can be featured in media publications at no cost, just by talking about our wins, just by writing a press release ourselves and submitting that to our network. Um, so how do we do this? Choose a recent win or success story that you wanna share. What's something great that's happened lately or an achievement that you, it might be a local business award thing, it might be you've you know, uh, got some new clients on board, you're doing something at the international level that you wanna talk about. Um, just some wins or success stories that you're having. I mean, this current climate right now, the newspapers and, and um, the journalists are gobbling things up where businesses are having to adapt and change in the current climate. Uh, that's something I'm, I've been advising my clients to do is choose something that you're, you're, you're doing at the moment where you're having to adapt. I mean, it's such a hot topic at the moment. Everyone having to adapt and go online and offer different services right now. So what have you had to do in your business um, where you might have had some wins in that area and you're actually adjusting to the current climate? You can talk about a current win like that, a success story that you want to share. Write it in the third person and include quotes. 
as funny as this sounds and as awkward as it might sound when you're writing a press release, include quotes from yourself, right? Include quotes from the owner of the business and on how things are going and the impact that you're having and that sort of thing and what you're seeing and what you're noticing. Uh, provide photos to go with the press release. And look, really what we want to try and do here is we want to make the journalist's job as easy as possible by providing them with all the content they need. Write the article, include some quotes, include some photos as well, and send them to your network. Make it as easy as possible for that journalist to print. I mean, these guys are busy, they're flat out. If you can provide them with all those resources that make their job super easy, then the more chances you have, you have of getting that actually published uh, as well. Here's something as an example. I used to do a lot of writing for the Illawarra Mercury and I used to write these articles called Music Scene. This is something you can do as well is offer to write a column, offer to write uh, an article once a week on your industry. This is something that I did for about seven years for the Illawarra Mercury. I wrote a Music Scene article. I would just write about uh, different uh, bands, releases they were doing, cool things they had coming up. Here's one on Beck Sandridge. She's a local girl doing some great things. This was, this was from a few years back. But every single week, I would have my article go in. And at the end of the article, you, you might be able to see there, it talks about Hayworth Music Center and Drum Room Chihaba, Wollongong Stores run by Glenn Hayworth. A little bit of a blurb on me. But that's free publicity for me, right? And it's, and it's just something good that I'm doing for my industry. So writing your own press release in your industry about other things that are going on can be great as well. But the, the reason I'm bringing that up too is because I would contact these bands and say, look, what do you got going on at the moment? Write something up for me. Tell me, tell me about the wins you're having right now. Tell me about your tours coming up. Tell me about your releases that you've got coming out. Send me some photos. Anything I could get to get, to get them to do to make my life easy. Because you know I'm just doing this as a, as a free thing. I wasn't getting paid for it. So I was trying to get them to do the bulk of the work to make my life easy as the journalist who's, who's submitting these articles. So doing the bulk of the work yourself is going to make it so much easier for the journalist to help them help you by getting your article published. So think about what you can write about as a press release. What's some current wins that you're having? Write it in the third person, include some quotes, get some photos and send it off to your network. If you need some contacts there, just send me an email. I've got some contacts at the Illawarra Mercury, um, even in Kayama here. I had a, a message from Kathy, I think it is, from the Bugle, who's, um, who we've got the contact there, who, who's, she's a, a member of the Chamber of Com Commerce here in Kayama as well, who's looking for stories as well. So we can send you some contacts there. Here's a little funny one for you guys. <laughs> a good lesson and a good laugh. I still get a giggle out of, even though this was many years ago. Ask to see a draft first. Have a look at what the Mercury did to me with this front page article. Here we are, me rocking out on the ukulele. Oh, there's a massive headline there. Sex attack man jailed. The article isn't in any way related to me, so don't worry. Here's, here's the headline for my article, Ukulele Hero. But guess what you see first? The ultimate stitch up of all time. My friends had an absolute field day laughing about this when it came out. This is, I've got this framed in our, in our shop because I think it's a funny little thing, but make sure you see a draft first. There's a really good lesson there. That is the ultimate stitch up. It will go down. Uh, as one of the biggest stitch ups of all time. Thanks, Laura Mercury. But uh, a good lesson there make sure you see a draft before this thing gets published because you can get a nice little headline like that, which has nothing to do with you, pop up underneath <laughs> your story. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's a little funny one there. Hope you guys get a laugh out of that one. Uh, okay, let's keep going. On a serious note, writing a book. Uh, this is something I'm doing at the moment in my industry, in the retail space, in the coaching industry, is I'm writing a book at the moment. And I'm learning from one of, the, uh, one of the guys who has had some great success in this area, Alan Dibb. He wrote the book called The One Page Marketing Plan. Um, I think it's a great book for you to read, a great book to add to your resource. We give it to our clients here. The One Page Marketing Plan was written by Alan Dibb. He's an Aussie guy, he lives in Melbourne. He's a great mentor of mine. I talk to him uh, basically every week about what we're doing. And he's written a book called The One Page Marketing Plan. I want to use that as an example of something that you can do. Here he is. He's Alan Dibb. He's written a book. He's written a book and it's on Amazon. It's got a five star rating. It's a number one bestseller in global marketing. It's got uh, 1,120 reviews there. And it's one of the best sellers on Amazon, right? An Aussie guy just wrote, wrote this book, came up with the idea, The One Page Marketing Plan. 
But really what Alan talks about with his book and why it's been so powerful for him is he's, number one, it's out there as, a, as an extra revenue stream for him, but this establishes him as an expert in his industry. He's got this book out there, right? And he is signing up some really big clients in his coaching that he does and onboarding them also as uh, in the workshops that he does because he has this book out there and that is helping to establish, his, establish him as an expert. And as I said at the start, people want to deal with the experts, right? So people want to deal with Alan because he has this book. This is how I got uh, on board with Alan in the first place. I had him referred to me as a, uh, as a friend. Someone referred this book to me and said, you got to read this book. This is a great book. So I read it. I contacted Alan. And now he's become a, a mentor for me in, uh, in what I'm doing with the coaching space. And he's mentoring me in writing my own book. Um, so this is a great example of the power of writing your own book and how that can be a great marketing asset for you, but how it can help to establish you as an expert. And I think the reason the books work so well is because we value written words, right? We value books, right? They hold weight, they hold some value. Um, you can add author to your bio, which also helps with that expert status as well. And I wanna share, give you guys a good resource here. I'll ask Megan to send this out after this webinar, this link here. This is a really great link uh, to a video that Alan's done on how he wrote this book, how he helped monetize it, and how he helped and how he promoted it to become a bestseller. So it's a, it's a video, it's about a 30 minute video that he's made on how to write, monetize, and promote a bestseller. And that's the link there. I'll ask Megan to email that out to you guys after this webinar. But that's a really, really good video to watch on the steps that Alan took to write this book and, and to promote it. It's, it's all in one 30 minute video. You honestly have to watch it. Um, it's a process that I'm going through with my book right now. And my, my book is going to be called something like, I haven't decided on the title, but it'll be around the seven steps to retail success. But I'm following this framework that he set up. So uh, the reason that works so well, as I said, is it helps to establish us as the experts in our industry. And it's worked wonders for Alan. And I'm sure it can do the same for you in your industry too. Um, the next thing, let's talk about blogs, right? Starting a blog. Something that you talk about. Uh, here's a guy... Tim Ferriss, you might have heard of Tim Ferriss. He wrote the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Uh, some people agree with that book, some people, some people don't agree. Uh, a lot of people have said, look, Tim Ferriss doesn't, doesn't work four hours, he works a lot harder than that. But I've read the book and it's a really interesting read. It can help with your time management skills, if nothing else. Uh, he wrote the book called The 4-Hour Workweek. So he's, he's done the, the book journey as well to help establish him as the expert. He's written a whole bunch of other books too. One's called The 4-Hour Body, I think, about his training and everything. But he is, he's one of the, the, the big players in the blog space. Uh, this, is, this is his website, The Tim Ferriss Show. Um, he has a podcast that, that's out there. As I said, he's got a book, he's got a newsletter, and he's really big in the, in the blog space. So this is where he has established him as an expert in his industry, in the personal development industry, by doing the book, by putting it all together with a blog, podcast he's doing videos he's got his email subscription set up and he's a really good example of someone who's playing at that expert level by just having the blog having the book out there doing the podcast obviously he's worked hard he's got a lot of good content out there but this is something that we can do right we can set up a blog we can start writing about things in our industry we can start writing about hot topics and and uh the problem with the problems that that need solving and the problems how we solve that and just being a voice in our industry and helping to establish ourselves as the expert and as the thought leader by having these blogs out there, by doing a book, by, by having a, a newsletter come out, uh, which is the next thing I want to talk about. Gary Vee is another guy. You, you guys hear, hear me talk about him a lot as well. Uh, he's another guy who is just putting out, he puts out so much free content. It's, it's ridiculous. He's, he has a whole media team which basically follows him around every single day, filming his conversations, filming his, his talks and his, He's, uh, he does this thing, tea, tea with Gary V, where he'll interview people one-on-one -on -one and provide advice. He'll get people to call up and, and, and uh, provide some real coaching one-on-one -on -one and give all that content away for free. Uh, it's all to establish himself as an expert in his industry. Uh, he has videos and podcasts released every day. And you see on his website, he's, he calls it the Gary Weekly. Uh, every, every Monday morning, a newsletter goes into your inbox and that's his way of achieving that expert status by providing that content by doing weekly newsletters. So videos, podcasts, release every day. Tim Ferriss is a good example. Gary Vee is another good example of these, 
uh, the, the content that you can put out there in the form of a blog, in the form of newsletters, in the form of videos and, and articles and things to help establish you as an expert in your industry. So can you see why they are the experts, these guys? Because they've taken the time to write about key topics, to talk about key topics, to provide their advice, and they've packaged it all up in the form of a book. Every one of these guys I've talked about has a book. Every one of them has a blog. Every one of them is doing articles. You know, let's, let's talk about some of the key things they're doing. They're focusing on their strengths, right? Every one of these guys focus on their strengths. Yeah, you know, Gary Vee talks about a couple of things. He talks a lot about social media, which is a huge strength of his. It's something that he's huge on. He's got millions of followers on Instagram. Uh, he focuses on that. And they stay, they often stay in their lane, you know, often with a lot of Alan Dibbs content, it's all around the one page marketing plan. It's all around the principles he teaches in that book. Um, same with Tim Ferriss. They talk about what they know. They talk about and areas that are, that are their strengths, that what their niche is. This is why it's so important at the start we talked about focusing on your strengths, right? So it's focusing on things that you're good at, your story, your history. What, what are you trained in? What are you passionate about? What are your strengths in your business that you need to focus on to, to help establish that expert status? We talked about what holds us back, getting over the imposter syndrome. Realize that you're probably a lot further along the journey than you think, and there's a lot of people that you can help, right? A, a conversation we had with one of our clients, Christian from Bean Roasted, right? He's, he's gonna start doing, he's already started doing barista training. I think he's, he might be in on this uh, webinar, so shout out to you, Christian. Congratulations to him, he's already started doing some videos on being a barista, but I hope he doesn't mind sharing the story that at the start, he, he, he felt a little bit of that imposter syndrome at the start because he's, you know, he told me, look, well, there's other baristas out there who know this and that, but man, he knows so much more about making coffees than I'll ever know. And I'm really interested to hear what Christian from Bean Roasters has to say about how to make a coffee from home, how to do that, right? I'm really interested in that. And he's already started making these training videos. So he's another example of someone who's got over that, getting over that imposter syndrome and getting out there and just making that content. And he's doing really well at it. Kudos to him. He's doing a fantastic job. So focusing on your strengths and realizing that you're a lot further along than you might think you are. It's how you perceive, how others perceive you sometimes is often uh, not how we perceive ourselves. Practice builds confidence. Get out there and start doing it. Start making those videos start writing those articles and start just making content uh, in your space. Defining your elevator pitch is what we talked about. How do we do that? Talk about the problem in your industry, the problem that needs solving. Talk about how you solve that problem and then provide some examples of people you've helped to solve that problem. Uh, we talked about providing market updates and free reports. I mean, there's, I've talked about real estate agents before and I think they do a great job at this. A lot of the local guys here, especially in Kayama, I get a lot of, uh, reports and updates on on what the status is of the of the market at the moment with real estate. Talked about the guys from the Property Couch who do an amazing job at that, uh, providing free reports and market updates to help establish yourself as a thought leader in your industry as an expert. Talked about video content. Talk about uh, what the problem is or or what the hot topic is. Talk about why it's important to solve this problem, and then provide your advice. And then maybe give some examples of how, how, of how that's worked for you or that might have been how, that, how that's worked for your customers or your clients. Uh, we talked about a press release and guys, that's such, a, that's such a great way to talk about some wins that you're having yourself, some, some success stories that you can share, write it up in the third person, include some quotes, include some photos, send it off to your network. And if you need some contacts, as I said there, send me an email, glenn at resolvecoaching.com.au. I'll send you some contacts that I have that you can send those press releases to. Writing a book is another great way, as we talked about, to establish yourself as a thought leader, as an expert in your industry, something that I'm, I'm doing myself. And Alan Dibb was a great example of someone who's doing great there with the one-page marketing plan. And starting a blog or a podcast is another great way to help establish yourself as the expert by putting that content out there. Look at my little man here. He's saying, hey, you can do it, right? This little guy I found as a meme on, uh, somewhere on the internet. Just a little bit of a confidence boost there. If he believes in you, I believe in you guys. You can do this, right? Let's uh, get over that imposter syndrome, start putting content out there and start talking about the key problems in your industry and providing your advice on how to overcome those problems. Uh, Wade is jumping on board now. We're gonna do a Q&A. Uh, we're gonna answer some questions. If you have any questions right now, chuck them up in the chat box there. A few, a few people are writing in there at the moment. 
Chuck your questions in the chat box. Wade's gonna jump on board and provide his two cents on becoming an expert in your industry. And we're going to answer some questions that you have, but also we're gonna go live and do a live Q&A on Facebook uh, Resolve Business Coaching Facebook page and on Instagram, Glenn Hayworth underscore coach. We're gonna go live there and do a Q&A and extend the conversation. If you've got any more in-depth questions, if you want to know any more, email me, glenn at resolvecoaching.com.au. And something I always talk about here is just making sure you take action. Guys, if you can just do one thing from today, it's take action. It's pick one of these areas that you need to start producing content in and just start doing it. It might be to start work on a press release. It might be to make a video. It might be um, to, to start to write a blog or an article or whatever it is. But reach out to someone, send an email, whatever you need to do. But start to take action today. So. Chuck in your questions, guys. Uh, Wade's going to jump on board as well, and we'll start to answer those. Wade, how are you going over there? Just, yeah, just before we answer the questions, I'll just jump in and just talk about um, actually publishing the content. So what I find a lot with talking to people is they get a little bit of like analysis paralysis where they think the content needs to be absolutely polished and perfect when they put it out there. Um, done is better than perfect. So what you really want to do is it doesn't need to be like, I mean, it can't look like a dog's breakfast, but it doesn't need to be absolutely super polished and, and uh, you know, super clean out there. It just needs to be really legible and, and easy for your target audience to understand. An easy way to sort of get started on that is even taking other people's articles that are related to your field, posting that article and then adding your two cents in the comments just to basically start off a conversation and get people engaging with that. And, you know, by you sort of adding your bit to the piece, it proves to people that you know what you're talking about. Um, and the other thing is that simply joining into other conversations that are happening in and around your niche. So, you know, especially like on LinkedIn as well, it's like there's good articles with lots of engagement. If you jump on there and actually leave something valuable and, and that proves that you know what you're talking about, I'm sure everyone's done this before. What people end up doing is they'll click on you, or your, you know, your profile on link through to see, oh, what's this person all about? And, you know, everyone's done it. They've gone for like a little, you know, Facebook or Instagram, uh, sorry, uh, LinkedIn stalk and, and figured out who they are and what company they work for and, and, you know, do they know what they're talking about? And yeah, that's the best way to do it is get, is simply just joining in the conversations that are already happening rather than worrying about publishing original pieces from scratch. You know, you've got to start somewhere and that's probably the fastest way you can get started today. Yeah, that's it. Join the conversation. I mean, you see it so often on, on uh, LinkedIn, some of these big thought leaders and experts uh, 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 dropping some great content and then you'll see in the comments there people leaving their two cents people leaving their opinions on things and how it relates to them and then that uh, people see that I mean so many you get so many eyes and so much attention on those comments sometimes some of those posts by the big players in, in, uh, in, the, in their industry get so much attention so to be one of the one of the top comments there um, can be a great way to join the conversation and get people over to see your pro profile as well um, Wait, let's throw it back to Megan there. How are you going over there, Megan? See if you're there to jump on and maybe uh, go through some of the Q&A here. You might, uh, oh, Megan's dropped out, I'm not sure. She's there left. She is. Oh, there you are, Megan, hey. I had a bit of an equipment malfunction earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, so some of the questions. Um, What's the fastest way to build momentum engagement with your messaging articles, videos? If you're starting out, there's a good chance that most of your blog videos will simply be ignored or not seen and building a follower base will be very slow. And do you use paid marketing like Facebook ads? Yeah, I think, I think it'd be great to hear from Wade on this one. Um, look, answering the questions your customers are asking you. What do your customers wanna know already? What, what questions are your customers asking you already that you can answer? For them um, and providing your advice there and look who cares if no one watches it at the start that's how everyone starts everyone starts with no one watching their stuff right um, and get leading into the paid space that's where you can actually target your audience by by doing some targeted Facebook marketing which way you can talk about uh, he's really the expert in this space um, by doing some paid promotions to get to your target audience that's how you can get more eyes on it, especially initially if you don't have that following yet, that's how you can get more eyes on it. Yeah, just, yeah, so building momentum, it's basically you've got to earn the right to, uh, to put your two cents in and, and that comes from, you know, engaging in other people's related content as well and that's the idea is to then eventually get them to come back and view your content too. Um, 
it's most like everyone starts with nobody watching. And so don't, that's where I say, don't worry about it being perfect and don't worry about pouring your heart and soul and everything right into this first piece of content because you want to be making as much as possible and then even updating what you already made, you know, 12 months ago and, and making it more relevant. So, <clears throat> and then on top of that, so using like Facebook or LinkedIn ads, absolutely. So the biggest sort of misconception, I guess people use with Facebook ads is they think it actually needs to be an ad that you put out there. But if you think of Facebook ads as a tool to actually just put content that you believe is going to be relevant in front of the right people, you're going to get a lot of bit better use out of the tool. So, so if you create content that you think is going to be applicable to a certain audience, then, then what you do is you go into the Facebook ads manager and actually target that audience. And as it doesn't need to be like a 10, 15 second ad, it can be a half hour video. It just, it just needs to be relevant to those. And Facebook will do the heavy lifting then with putting it in front of uh, the right people. Yeah. Um, the other question, uh, the other, I think I may have sent you a link to um, an article the other day with regard to uh, some of these um, ads that come out asking for um, expert advice on um, like for TV shows. Like I think I sent you one the other day that Ben Fordham was looking for um, some expert um, speakers and things like that to feature on, on his, um, his show. Is that something you would recommend to, to be involved with? And these come out from time to time. Yeah, I, I sussed out that one that you sent me. That's something that, um, as I talked about Alan Dib, he, he does a lot of, he, he goes on other people's podcasts. Um, there's a lot of podcasts out there, especially who are looking for people um, to join the podcast. I've had a few uh, messages myself on Instagram recently, of people asking to join the podcast. Uh, they're looking for people uh, to, to join the show, to talk about their their area of expertise and to talk about what they've learned over the years and, and provide their, their input on certain topics. That's something that uh, I know that Alan does a lot of and I think it's something that can be valuable um, is, is joining. I think that, that space in particular, the podcast space, is, is a really good opportunity to join the conversation and to reach a new audience, to tap into someone else's audience there and provide your insight. And, and I mean, just the fact that someone else sitting across from you is introducing introducing you and going through your spiel before you even talk i mean just puts you at that at that, that status, of, status of people saying well i want to hear what this guy has to say you know he's uh he, he sounds like he's he's an interesting interesting guy so third party compliments having someone lead into into the uh the intro you know um just on top of that too what i'd sort of try to make sure is is that you can actually get a copy of any media that gets created out of it so you can then publish it on your own channels because the strength comes from the data that you can actually get, especially out of videos that you publish from your own channels. So if you're going to be involved in, in anything like that, that's going to be recorded or, um, you know, or published, if you can get a copy of it yourself, I mean, if you can't, and the, the best you can do is still just share something that someone else publishes from their account, then that's okay. You can't get the data from it, but it's still positioning you as an expert. Um, but yeah, if you can get a, a copy of the actual content so you can publish it, that's where you're going to really win because you're basically there doing the hard work for you, creating the content for you, which positions you as that expert. Glenn did it only uh, early this year where when he gave a speech over at the NAMM show in, uh, in Anaheim, which is the biggest music retailer show in, on the planet. And he gave a speech on Instagram and what we were able to do is actually take a copy of that video and we ran that video through Facebook ads. Um, to, to increase the engagement, increase the awareness of that video and eventually like, lead people back to our website. Yeah, that's it. And that, that's a good example too of what you guys like Gary Vee and that are doing is they'll do, a, they'll do an interview on someone else's podcast, but then they'll take that recording and run it on his own podcast. Um, so yeah, way spot on there. The more you can take that, that, that media and, and use it on all your different platforms, um, really great way to, to keep adding more content to, to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we've got another question here. How do you know what you've got is valuable enough for a press release? Um, I think just put it out there. <laughs> like, honestly, uh, I, I wouldn't question it too much. I would just, I'd find something that, uh, I mean, cause what's the worst that can happen? What, they don't run it. The, you know, there's no, there's no loss there, right? Write it up and chuck it out there anyway. And um, I mean, look, if you want to bounce any ideas off, off myself and Wade, yes, shoot us an email and we can maybe help point you in the right direction there. But uh, there's no harm putting it out there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't question whether it is or not. I would just do something up because 
there's no harm in sending that out there. They might not run it. So what, you might have wasted, you know, 10, 15 minutes of writing this thing up, but at the very least, you could then release that as an article yourself or, or on your own social media. So I would write it up anyway and send it out. Um, I don't think there's been any press release I've done in the last few years, which they haven't run. Um, a, lo a lot of the time, uh, these guys are looking for articles to run. And uh, as long as it's, as it's something that isn't a salesy message, you're not trying to be salesy and talking about, you know, we've got this sale on at the moment and you've got to jump on board. As long as you, you position it in a way of, um, you know, talking about wins, success stories and, 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 and interesting topics and something interesting to read, as long as it's not put forward in a salesy way, then I don't think there's any harm at all in sending that out there. I would just type it up, send it out, and you can always get feedback from there, from the journalists. Well, that, that was the next question was, who is they? Which, who, who is your, um, your, your market? Who are you sending this in, the press release to? Well, as I, as I said, um, you know, if you, if you want to shoot us an email, I'll send you through the contacts that I have. Um, these are journalists that I've built up relationships with in uh, at, at different papers, uh, particularly in this area. Um, and, and I think it's good for you to start to build a relationship with, with uh, these contacts, um, you know? So at the very least, if, if they don't run your article this time, at least they know who you are and get a bit of an idea about what you do so that next time um, you've, got, you've got a better chance. Um, so, okay. yeah. yeah I was gonna say, the other thing is that it doesn't, you don't necessarily need to um, use friends of friends either. You can actually just jump on LinkedIn and search for journalists in certain areas or even like, you know, trade magazines or publications that you're involved with. And just most journalists in that are pretty good actually on LinkedIn and pretty easy to find. So reach, if you need to sort of reach out to them, um, I would probably start with LinkedIn. It's gonna be the easiest way to find them. And then who wouldn't want their job done for them on a platter? So as I said, if you write a press release and it's good and they don't have to do very much work to it, absolutely. They've got a quota they've got to hit every day of the amount of content they've got to get out. And if you're going to help them, why wouldn't they? And I guess the publication also depends on where your market is. Um, if you're appealing to a market that's in Sydney, uh, an ad in the Bugle is probably not going to do you much good. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it depends where your market is. Um, yeah, so again, LinkedIn's your best friend with that because you can use you know, the geography search function and everything and, and find out where these people actually are. Yeah, good advice. Oh, the other thing too is that journalists move around a lot especially in television. So you might see, you know, one journalist presenting locally one night and then, you know, it seems like the next night they're on like the national station. So they do move around a lot too. So if, if you think you've got a contact from a while ago, you might want to just recheck where they are uh, before reaching out to them. Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Thank you. How is Marvin? Um, how are we going there, Megan? Any more or do you want to... No, I think that's about something? it for the questions. Um, cool. Anything else, guys, you want to mention or? Um, I think make sure you tune in next week. Uh, we have another great webinar coming up next week, Wednesday, midday, same time, same place, same channel. Uh, Megan, I'm sure has got the email out there or, or we'll get the email out. But um, uh, I hope we're providing a lot of value with these webinars. We've been getting some great feedback, um, but you can always shoot us an email uh, with more feedback that you have on, on this sort of stuff as well and let us know. Uh, on any questions that you have or any um, anything that you'd like to see in these webinars. And uh, and also just a big shout out, Megan, thanks for your support and thanks for the support from Kaima Council in running these events and Kaima Business Chamber as well. Excellent, no worries. And we will send the link out to this recording to all of those that registered uh, so you can watch it again later. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and I'll get that link to you as well as to, to send out. Um, on uh, writing a book and how to how to monetize a bestseller. That's that's a really good resource for people as well. Excellent. All right. Cheers. Thanks very much for that, Glenn and Wade. And uh, we hope to see you all again next Wednesday. And don't forget to tune in for the uh, the Facebook and Instagram pages after this. That's it. Yeah, we're going to go live very shortly uh, to jump on on there. And you can uh, chuck in any questions that you want. Wade and I will jump on there and do a quick Q and A on the social yeah. media after this too. Okay. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Thanks. Go on, rip in. Take some action.